Hegenomy. This is your review for two. Good day, my name is Joe Gerba. Today I'll be going over hegemony and how it plays with two players. Now I'll probably swap back and forth between hegemony and uh, hegemony, which is what uh, we've been calling it. It is a one to four player asymmetrical social class game where it'll be played over five rounds and whoever scores the most points will win the game. Um, there's the capitalist class, there's the worker class, there's the middle class, and then there's the state. In the two player game, you'll just be playing as the capitalist class and the working class there's a pretty big dichotomy of you know in this game are you going to try to get the policies where you want it the capitalist class is trying to make all the money trying to get workers in the private sector paying them as little as possible while trying to collect the money and the goods and sell to the foreign market and, you know all while looking at the policies the working class is just trying to increase the prosperity by being able to provide health, uh, education, and sometimes luxury to their people and hopefully increase the prosperity. And then at the end of the five rounds, whoever has the most points will win. So let's see a little bit more how to play. So in this game, I don't wanna go too far deep into how to play because there is so much in this game, even at the two player level. However, the normal gameplay loop is you have seven cards in your hand. You can use those seven cards as the action that's stated on the card as long as you um, meet the requirements. And you'll either play that card for that card or do one of your basic actions. So you have seven cards, you're gonna play five throughout the round. So you'll have five either basic actions or card actions you're gonna do. Now some of these actions may let you um, you know, vote or propose a bill, I'll say. Uh, you know, as a capitalist class, you can make business deals, export, uh, do things in the private sector where you can, you know, kind of manipulate and get workers in there, you know, uh, determine how you want to um, make your wages. Do you make it just you know, just enticing enough for workers to want to work there, but while maintaining the profits. So it's really big. It's, this game is a really big asymmetrical game. And like I said, the capitalist class is trying to exploit everyone. Whereas the working class, you're going to get uh, workers throughout the game. And your actions may be, you know, try to get more uh, social, socialist, you know, uh, policies where you want a few things to be more free, a little bit more uh, of the public sector going. And you're trying to make sure you have enough money just to keep your people healthy, keep your people educated, and if you can, a little bit of luxury. So really the gameplay loop is you have five actions per round to be able to propose the policies, to be able to put your, put your people out um, is the capitalist you can sell the company you'll be able to do just a multitude of things there's just so much in this game but the main gameplay loop you know is going to really revolve around these cards and if you don't want to do the card you'll do a basic action so don't want to go too far into it because you'll be hearing about it in my gameplay so let's see a little bit more what I thought about the game so the components the rules and the references the components Man, I'm gonna say, this is pretty cool. I, they gave you a lot of stuff. It was super overwhelming to punch out. It was super, when I got this to the table, I was like, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? I'm at Lisboa level of setting up things where I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm putting stuff on the table. I'm like, when is this gonna be used? But man, the components in this game are actually really cool. You know, everything from this, this bag of this voting cube bag, you know, to the, to the worker meeples, this quality production and components, top notch. Uh, my one knock on it is, man, these cards super stuck together, but if that's my only, you know, gripe about the game, it's doing pretty good. Let's go on to the, the rules. The rules are thick. The rules, man, I could not get distracted while I was reading these rules because there's so much to them. In this game, you really need one person to really know and be able to teach this game and to get it to get it going because there's yes, there's the loop, but there's so many little things to keep track of. The rules I would say are I don't know, maybe 10 pages of this rule book are actually 
rules to the game as an overall. The rest of the rules come in the rule book and on these player aids where they are, you know, one page, but they're thick. Now they also, which I do like, give you a super small player aid. So once you've played, you know, once and you're on your second playthrough, this is just enough to give you that reminder of what you need to do. You can flip it over on what the taxes. They do give you like a, a round overview kind of sheet. So I would say they did the best they could on the reference sheets, but there's so much to this game that is still overwhelming between, you know, my the, the first game we played between the rule book, the rule aid, and trying to uh, keep these two reference sheets um, you know, in my view, while my wife was keeping the, the worker, the working class kind of in her view, yeah, really kind of tough. But I think they did a good job with how thick the rules are in this game. So let's talk about setup and table size. Setup in this game, like I said, this is not a game that you're going to spend five minutes setting up. This is a game where if you're going to play with someone else or if you're going to play with all four people, you need to have this set up beforehand. You need to, you know, when other people walk in or get ready, you need to be like, all right, let's play uh, hegemony, hegemony and let's, let's get this to the table, but I already got everything set up. For me, I think this took about 20 minutes to set up, but I was overwhelmed the whole time. Table size, this is going to take up every inch of table that you have. We sat side by side. They, they suggest maybe turning it sideways for the four player game. So you have two people on each side, but man, it takes up a lot of space, but it sure does look good on the table. So let's talk about the gameplay. And I will say one of my things that I've noticed about myself and what I gravitate towards is thematic mechanics. And man, is everything in this game thematically, you know, correct with what you're doing and the actions you're taking. And it is awesome. You know, whether it's the capitalist really trying to exploit the people and moving prices, moving the wages around while doing these exports and imports while all keeping the, the bills in track on foreign trade, immigration, you know, labor policy where you want to be able to charge the minimum amount all while keeping like the taxation under control because you're going to have to pay your capital tax, you know, on, on a lot of the revenue that you bring in. So it's just, it's so cool thinking about it that way. How can I just maximize my money? Whereas like the working class, I'm really talking about the two player, you know, version because you get that capital class versus the working class. The working class just so thematic where if you have extra workers and there's not enough places to work, you can demonstrate. Uh, if, if the wages are too low, you can go on strike on those, uh, on those companies. You can work in the public sector to say, hey, private sector, I'm not going over there. I'll, I'll take a little bit less money and I'll make my own public services and goods, all while trying to keep you know, taxation high and as many things free as you can, the socialist policies. You know, and I'm not big on politics. I hate talking about politics, but man, is this game just so thematic and fun. You know, yes, the rules are thick, the rules are there, but every time you do an action, you really feel like it, it can be related to the real world. They give you, um, you know, I don't know if every copy is going to have this, but they gave you a book of why they did some of these actions and, you know, how it actually, you know, translates to the game and just, there's so many good thoughts about this game and there's just so many cool things you can do during the actions. And once you propose a bill, you know, then you, then you, you produce, you, then you got to pay your taxes. Then you have to feed your, your people as the working class. And then you go on to the vote. Even in a two player game, voting is usually terrible. Um, but they did it in a way where this is really neat. They made a, the working dummy class, a class in there, but you're still going to put cubes in there based on, you know, various things throughout the game. So when you propose bills, you're going to be grabbing cubes out to represent votes. I think they did a great job adapting this to two player, even though it should be played probably at the three to four player count. But 
man, the gameplay in this, once you get through the rules, is super just, it's nice to think about. There's a lot of choice. I love that in games. But man, just the thematic elements and how they tie together, just fantastic in this game. So I'm not gonna keep this review too long, hopefully, but is this game good for two? And I really like this game for two. Um, this game just has that push and pull, that tug of war mechanic with two, that it really is neat. After, after three games, we finally got into the loop of Oh, here's what we're doing. Here's what I'm going to try to do. And you know, you start to realize some of the cards that may come up, you know, in your class, some of the the nuances of the game of, well, I got to I got to entice some people to come over here or I don't want, you know, th there's just a lot to think about on the board. You know, the bills you you propose, just so much in the game to think about and two player tug of war. This is great. Now, do I think this is optimal at two? Probably not, and probably not how this game is supposed to be played. Um, if it were up to me after reading the other rules for the middle class and the state, I could definitely see this game being in my sweet spot at three players, um, you know, adding the, the middle class. At four players, one player plays as the state, and that doesn't seem as interesting as being, you know, capitalist, middle class, working. But in the two-player game, you just play as capitalist and the, the working class. I'm hesitant to say you should buy it just for the two-player. However, my partner, my wife, thinks that that's not true. She thinks that this game can be, should be bought just for the two-player experience. So... I think it's a great game. She thinks it's a great game, saying it can be bought with two players. I think, you know, it's kind of on the fence and really this sweet spot's probably at the three to three player mark where you don't have as much downtime. But if you play with, you gotta play with people who really wanna, you know, dig in to their class. If I could get my buddies at Dads and Dice to play this, I'd be over the moon. But to get this to the table is no small, feet if but if you can get that three to four player i think you'll be really just engrossed in the game but even at the two player mark we've had a really good time this is one of those games where if you can have set up for multiple days in a row and play multiple times so you don't have to is a one-off two-player game man this would be tough to get to the table i don't know if i would spend all this work to get it to the table, play once and put it back up. That's really hard for me. But if you played three times over a weekend with two players, you know, really got the, the, the nuances down, really got the, the gameplay loop down, I think it could be really good. So I wanna give props to, to the creators because this is an amazing game with super thematic mechanics. And sometimes, like I said, I don't like the politics theme, but sometimes in a game, it just strikes you as how balanced, you know, how well what you're doing is really equates to real world thoughts and you can relate and see some of the big picture items, you know, sometimes like a Lisboa or some of these other games were just super thematic, even though you don't have a lot of choices, you know what you're doing, you know, you have a reason why, super cool. I really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, there's a you know a couple negatives, but they're just small gripes at this point. If you can get past the rules and if you can have a good play group, this game is awesome. Two players, I still would recommend. Don't know if, like I said, don't know if I would recommend buying it just for two, but my wife would. So um, I know I kind of ranted at the end, but there's a lot to unpack with this game. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. So. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed the review and until next time.